What's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all have had a great weekend. Hope you all had a great Sunday. As we've already got to Monday, it seems like the weekends just go faster and faster. Um, but this morning, I did a video about the potential for tropical development, like I've been making many videos about this over the last week. And I told you guys in the video that I would get more in depth with all of this in, this evening. So here it is. So stay tuned. This is going to be a longer video. But if you really want to know how this is all going to come together, how everybody's going to be affected, what's going to be the most extreme impacts, how this is coming together, what could allow this to get um, maybe to a hurricane, what could allow this to not form at all. I'm going to break all of it down in this. We're going to run through all the models. Uh, that's available and that's somewhat reliable. We're going to run through some of the ensembles. We're going to run through some strengthening and we're going to run through the pattern in place um, that is going to either limit or promote strengthening and what would be Bill, which is the next name in the hurricane list. So um, if you guys have not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. I'm just a small YouTuber that likes to talk about his passion, which is the weather. And so it's much appreciated if you hit that subscribe button to support me. And uh, thank you all for the incredible support. I also want to mention that I'm very active on Twitter. On Twitter, I talk about weather everywhere. I live here and currently here in South Carolina um, and talk a lot of weather here about the state, but I break down the weather across the eastern U.S. also. Very active on Facebook, too. So definitely give me a follow there. And uh, like the video if you like it. Um, it helps the video get out there. So it's much appreciated by, by you guys. And hit the notification bell if you want to know when I upload. I upload once a, once a day, um, so seven times a week. Sometimes I upload twice a day, kind of like how I'm doing today. So, um, yeah, let's get going with this. So we're going to check out what this thing looks like right now. And it doesn't look like much of anything. I'm going to try to say this right. The Bay, Bay of Campeche, um, that is where this is at on the southern Gulf of Mexico, but this is technically called the Bay of Campeche. Um, if I mess that up, my bad, but I think you guys know what I mean. Um, I'm not the best with sounding out things, so just uh, uh, let's get, so let's talk what's going on here. You basically just got huge areas of convection blowing up, but there's nothing organized. It's just a broad level, uh, a broad um, area of convection kind of blowing up everywhere. Just the area basically showers and storms. There's not a center of sort of circulation really developed with this. But this is the area that we're going to be watching. So this is the area that could potentially develop into something. So we're going to look at this right here. This is a National Hurricane Center. These are the guys that you want to seek professional information from. Um, I'll just break it down. I'll talk about it and give my two cents on it. So Right now, we're still at the 2 p.m. update, so if you watch this video, it might be at the 7 p.m. update. Heck, it might be updating as I'm talking right now. I think, if anything, this will upgrade to maybe a 60% chance of development within the five days, and then the two days might upgrade to a 20% chance. You also got this little development off the coast of the Carolinas. There's an area of showers and storms that has a brief chance to become a tropical depression. We'll watch this. This is not affected, not, not going to affect anybody really along the eastern coast except the, for rip currents and high waves across the eastern coast and the eastern beaches of the U.S. So this is the area we're really talking about and breaking down right here. This is the area that has a chance to develop into an all-out tropical storm. So let's get going with this. What we're going to do, we're going to break down the GFS, the Canadian, the European, and the ICON model. We're going to talk about what it shows. Then we're going to talk about the pattern in place, uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, that's going to promote or uh, not promote strengthening. So let's go through this. Um, if you don't know where we're at, watch right here. In this part of the screen right here, this will tell you what day we're at, show you what hour is, but I think most people just want to know what day we're at. So this is the area we're watching. It's the Bay of Campeche right here. This is the Gulf of Mexico, and this is the um, this is the deep south right here, the Gulf states. So as we're getting going through in time, we're getting into Tuesday. You notice the L pops off, a low pressure. This thing, and I'm going to talk about why too, this thing stays smashed down here. It um, basically just meanders down here in the bay and, and really cannot get any steering flow to it. It does not want to move. It does not want to cruise north. It just sits down here for a while and is very disorganized and it's going to stay disorganized. This thing actually has a chance, um, whatever area of low pressure this is, actually has a chance to drift a little further south back over Central America before trying to get back north. But we're getting into Wednesday now of this week, and uh, it's still nothing really. But you notice the circle right here, that's where our low pressure would be. We're getting into Thursday. We're getting into Friday. Finally, the pattern in place, which I'll break down, 
um, allows this thing to start moving north a little bit, but not very fast. Steering currents does not promote it to move very quickly north, but it's heading north towards the lower 48, towards the United States. And notice with it bringing a huge surge of moisture. Guys, I want to mention this, that even if this thing becomes a hurricane, I don't think winds are going to be a huge deal with this. I really don't. I think the biggest by far deal with this is going to be obviously maybe a little bit of coastal flooding. But the biggest deal will be um, the significant amount of rain it can bring to already areas that are very flood prone and already areas that have been saturated with rain. Notice there's a front dipping down right here too, and I'll talk about that. But I want to mention that this storm will be heavily east-sided. So say if the low pressure moves into Louisiana right here, kind of the same area that Hurricane Laura made landfall. Everybody east of that, say New Orleans, the coastal areas of Mississippi and Alabama will be get drenched with heavy rain. And this is getting into this coming weekend. So not we're obviously done with this weekend. This is getting into this coming weekend. So if you got plans anywhere along the Gulf states, you need to pay attention to this because this is if you got anything outdoor activities, this will totally mess everything up. But you keep going in here in time, you're getting into Sunday, but look how slow it is. So this is 18Z Saturday, so it's Saturday afternoon. This is Sunday afternoon. It's, it looks like it moves no more than maybe 100, 150 miles in the day. So it gets in and it gets picked up by a trough and really carries itself east. And uh, it has a chance to bring a lot of rain to even areas like Georgia and the Carolinas and areas in the eastern U.S. So I know you people watching in the Carolinas and Virginia, the mid-Atlantic, the southeast in general are thinking, well, hey, this thing doesn't like it's going to affect us. Well, it could indirectly affect us by bringing a ton of moisture. This happens a lot. So a lot of storm systems will hit the Gulf and then they'll sometimes if there's a trough coming or a cold front, they like to get picked up. Um, they like to pick up whatever developments here and then shift it east and bring a lot of rain. And sometimes, especially if this thing's a high-end storm like a hurricane, sometimes, you know, on these east quadrants of these storms, there can be a tornado threat. So um, I don't I don't foresee any of that being an issue or anything like that. But um, I just don't think the storm's going to be organized enough to really promote anything like that. But I really think there could be a big-time rain event. So that's what the GFS shows. Uh, the Canadian model, which, you know, a lot of people lack respect of respect of with, with anything it does. But I tell you what, last hurricane season, and I've mentioned this multiple times, it did fairly well. And it's done fairly well with um, potential tropical storm bill here. It has held its own. It stayed consistent. And here's the low popping off Wednesday. You notice all the activity going on right here. This gets into a low pressure, and uh, it has a strength of around, I don't know, uh, uh, basically a thousand or a thousand and two a low pressure here millibars so really that's like a depression at worst a very low end 45 mile per hour tropical storm but i think it does a good idea of showing how the precipitation will set up notice the low pressure right here there isn't hardly anything over there towards uh houston but there's a lot going on a big surge of tropical moisture on the eastern side of this low pressure that's how this storm is going to be i really think and look at it it starts slamming the Carolinas in Georgia with heavy rain. Almost all the models show this. I'll show you the icon from 12Z only because it goes out to 180 hours. So we're starting off at 126. So this is actually Friday. This thing's still well in the goal for getting into Saturday. The difference between these models really is the timing. They all have it kind of being the same strength as far as how strong the storm's going to be, but the timing is way off. But you see it down here, same thing. It's It looks like a a low pressure of some sort, um, but it's just drifting very slowly. It's all getting all the way into Sunday, and it's just now trying to uh, come, on, come on shore as far as the low pressure. But notice, all the rain is on the east side of circulation. So you have to watch that. Much more slower than the other models. So we're going to look at the European. European, we're going through in time. Look at the little spin down here. Um, we're going through in time, and it's just spinning down here. It's still cannot pick itself up and get head north. Thursday, we finally get this huge, broad area of low pressure that finally gets going. And it's pretty steady with all the other models, except it has landfall of whatever this is a little further east. But look at this surge of moisture on the east side of this storm. This will bring significant flooding rains to Louisiana, parts of Mississippi, and even Texas, maybe even as far as east as um, Alabama. But we're getting into Sunday, and this whatever's left of it is just finally getting on shore. 
and it throws moisture into the Carolinas, even though you can't really see it. So we're done talking about that. What we're going to break down here is not that. Let's go to this. Um, I want to show y'all, this is basically streamlined. So this is basically showing you energy. So in a nutshell, we're going through in time. I know this is hard to understand, but what I'm going to try to break down for you guys is, is significant. So if you really want to know what's going on here, you notice these lines are kind of buckling up here and then they kind of surge down here. You can even see the arrows. Well, this is getting into Tuesday into Wednesday. So um, basically you have a trough digging here, which by the way, is going to bring some nice, comfortable, low humidity temperatures for a huge chunk of the eastern U.S., almost all the way down the panhandle of Florida, um, low dew points, low humidity. Um, and then you have a massive, massive ridge of high pressure developing um, out west. That is, I feel bad for them people. Uh, Death Valley uh, might break their all-time June high temperature record, I think of 127, 128 degrees, um, which isn't far off from the um, all-time record um, high temperature for planet Earth. Um, so it's incredible. A Phoenix, um, 120 degrees, I believe, is in your forecast for a day or two, or at least close to it. But anyways, we're not we're not we're not breaking that down right now. But ridge of high pressure. So what's going to happen here is that's going to deliver shear down here, a little bit of light shear down here, and then it's going to have dry air. When you when you got a big time ridge of high pressure, you have a lot of dry air in place, um, no moisture, especially right under the ridge of high pressure. So um, <clears throat> this trough's moving off, but you have some shear down here. And basically this high pressure sitting over here and low pressure is moving up here. And you have a lot of dry air wanting to affect whatever's going on here. And well, the low pressure's right here. Let's back it up here. So right into here, this is some shear right on top of the northern to northwest side of the storm. It's not a lot. But um, it's enough. It's definitely, I wouldn't say it's a little, but it's not a ton either, but it's enough. So you've got sheer dry air and just basically a big ridge of high pressure really influencing the um, northwest side of the storm. And I think it's going to choke it up, choke it up enough to prevent significant strengthening. Now, you know, this kind of pattern in place could be any, in place anytime during the summer or early fall. But um, it's definitely more common around this time of the year. Meanwhile, you have that trough. So, what what does that mean? Well, this is a good thing to look at. So it's, this is pretty cut and dry. The browns you see on this screen are drier air. When you see the more bluish colors, the greenish colors, that's more moist air. So obviously you can see, let's back it up a little bit. Obviously you can see where the trough's digging. You're, you have some drier air moving over the eastern U.S. And um, you have this huge plume of tropical moisture surging north into the Gulf of Mexico. Well, it's going to be fighting off all this dry air. It, it, it's fighting off a lot of things. It's fighting off dry air right on the northern and northwest side of the storm. It's really going to try to get wrapped up into the, whatever circulation it has. This is going to choke this storm up and prevent a lot of strengthening, I really think. That's why, I, if I had to call it now, I think the worst case this storm becomes is a tropical storm, tropical storm bill. But this moves in. You can obviously see a huge plume of moisture, though, on the east side of the storm. So regardless, the east side of the storm is going to get the worst. And then it's picked up, picked up by that trough, and it's just carried away. So I think the southeast, the deep south, is going to get a ton of rain with this. Um, this is the ensembles according to the GEFS as far as where low pressure can be. We'll move through this really quick because I kind of showed this this morning. You see the bright area in the yellow. That's where low pressures could be in the Gulf of Mexico, and they're all clustered up together in the Gulf of Mexico. And they all are liking the idea of either a far eastern, um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm talking my head off, the far eastern coastal areas of Tennessee, Tennessee, of Texas landfall, or just Louisiana. It's really they're really all like in that area for sure. Um, go to this next frame, and uh, this is sorry I'm breaking far here. This is shear, so this this is a great thing to look at. So you y'all pay attention down here. The reds and the pinks and the browns that's high shear. The the more bluish colors, the grayish to greens that's a lighter shear. So this is deep layer shear. So check out the center of low pressure that gets going down here. Well, this does a, does a great job of showing all that sheer and dry air on the northwest side of the storm. 
It's going to eat away completely on the western and the northwest side of the storm, and even areas of the northern side of the storm. On the areas of the west western side, it's going to it's going to they're still going to be sheer, but not near as much. Um, so I think that is really preventing this from really becoming a a hurricane. Now I want to show you this. Y'all bear with me because I keep having to do this because it won't stay on my screen here. Let's go to this and that's a good tropical storm. So this is chances of tropical storm development. Um, we're going to get through in time, but check it out. So this is at the 120 to 168 hour time frame. So this is basically this weekend. Chances of tropical storm developing are in that secondary blue color, which is a 30 to 40 percent chance. So that's pretty significant. You're getting close to 50 percent chance of a tropical storm developing, um, according to the EPS ensembles. So, you know, it, it's a pretty significant chance of a tropical storm developing. Now, I'll show you the Inverse 92L model intensity guidance here. Um, you know, a lot of models have it going to tropical storm status. A lot of them, a few of them don't. And you got one there that wants to go to category one. Um, I don't look at that a whole lot, but um, as far as temperatures, uh, 29, 28 degrees Celsius, there's some areas here. Um, that's pretty much the low to mid 80s. That I mean, that, about low 80s. That's not crazy warm, but that's enough for tropical development, I'll tell you that. So how's that compared to average where it's a little bit warmer than average in, in that area? But, but not much. It's nothing unheard of. It's nothing, it's nothing significant or anything. But compared to average, it's a little bit warmer. The water's out there. So really, I think the big thing this thing does have going for it is sea surface temperatures, which is a big deal. But you got a lot of other things going against the storm, too, that are preventing a huge. But I cannot stress it enough, guys, the rainfall of this. And this is the EPS ensembles. Um, I know you're looking down here like, that, that's not a ton. I mean, but... This is going to increase. That's uh, several inches of rain here where it's pinpointing where the landfall of potential bill could be. So um, the rainfall signature to this signal to this is pretty significant. You look at the GEFS and it's pretty high down there too. So a lot of rain can follow this system and not only down here in Louisiana, um, Mississippi and Alabama. But this could bring a lot of rain for the Carolinas, too, in Florida, especially the Panhandle of Florida, which I think has not gotten a ton of rain lately. Um, so I actually think here in the Carolinas, where we've picked up a lot of rain lately. We might go several days, some people, without rain. And this might be the next chance of rain brought by uh, this surge of tropical moisture that could be built. So that's all I got. I know that's a mouthful. It's a long video. We're going on 18 minutes now. Uh, but thank you all for watching. Thank you all for support. And y'all have a great start to y'all's week tomorrow, and we'll try to figure out what this is going to do. Y'all have a blessed evening.